Now, last video, we saw how to create this amazing formula that's counting the number of hours for a particular name, description, month, and disposition. But that formula is a lot of work. So in this video, we want to see a much easier solution using a pivot table. Now here's our data set, name, date, description, work hours, and disposition. Here's the formula report we built last time, and we'll build our pivot table report below. To start a pivot table, we select one single cell in the proper data set, go up to Insert Pivot Table, or we can use our keyboard, Alt-NV. We want to put it on the existing sheet, I-26, click OK. There's the pivot table field list with our columns. The first thing we want to do is we want to automatically group dates. So I'm going to drag date down to rows. It groups it into years, quarters, and months. I'm going to drag quarter off. And now I want to drag years over to columns. Now we can see we have months and year. Now we actually want month over in the column two. But when I drag it over, we need to expand. Right click, expand, expand entire field. Now let's right click down to Pivot Table Options. And I don't want the column widths to change each time. So I'm going to uncheck Auto Fit Column Widths on Update. Click OK. And I'm going to try to come up here, highlight columns, click and drag, keep those uniform. Click back in the Pivot Table. Now we want a unique list of names, so we drag it down to rows. And if you remember last video, we talked about, well, we'd have to do something like extract the column, remove duplicates, or use some formula. But with a pivot table, that is amazing. Just drag it to the rows, and we get a unique list. Now we want to drag description. And when I drag it down to columns, it gives me a unique list for each one of the months. Now, transfer is a condition or criteria that governs the entire report. So with our cell selected in the pivot table, we go up to pivot table, analyze ribbon tab, go over to the filter group, and we want to insert a slicer. We can check disposition. Click OK. Now, for example, I could select transfer, and later our calculation will be based just on transfer. Now, the last thing we need is we need our hours work. So I click back here. Drag hours work down to values. This is a number, so it defaults to sum. So I'm immediately going to right click in the values area of the pivot table, summarize value by, and change it to count. The next thing we want to do is I want to get rid of subtotals. So up to design, over to layout, subtotals do not show subtotals. But wait a second, those numbers are not correct, and the reason why is I'm counting work hours here, but it's actually counting every single number. It is not differentiating between a positive and a negative number. Now remember, in our formula, we asked, is the column less than 0? The problem with a pivot table is we need a marker for each row that tells us it's negative or it's not. So in this case, we're actually going to add an extra column. This is a helper column to help us make the pivot table report. I'll just type a label. Because this is an Excel table, when I hit Enter, it incorporates that new column into the table. Since the pivot table is looking at the table object, when I add a new column, the pivot table will see it after I refresh. Now I say equal, arrow, arrow. And that's the table formula nomenclature for relative cell reference. The at symbol is the implicit intersection operator, which means from this column, get the value in this row. When I hit Enter, the column auto populates. It's not working. It actually doesn't matter what cell I F2. I forgot the less than 0. Enter. That's another amazing thing about Excel tables. If I have the automatically fill the column feature, it fills it from any position. Now I come over and click inside the pivot table, and I don't see the column. That's because with pivot tables, we have to right click, refresh. And now I see the column. We're going to drag this down to the filter area. And then from the drop down, we select True, click OK, and there's our report. And if I click over here and drag this over, adjust it, scroll over, oh, that is amazing. 
we created that so much more quickly than our formulas. Now we better change the column width here so we can see that label on our report. All right, that was a little fun with pivot tables last time we saw formulas. And of course, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to check out the other versions of how we complete this report, check out these videos.